Okay. Hi, everybody. Welcome. Okay. Welcome to the Meet You question, uh, the English version. Our guest and Charlene Lavallee. Uh, uh, Richard is in the Lac Saint Jean. So, Charlene, we'll start with you. And can you give us a little bit of a, your bio and your background in the, the Meet You community? So, my name is Charlene Lavallee. I'm the president of the newly revived Amnesis. Um, Amnesis stands for Association um, Off Reserve, Non Status, and um, any Metis in the province of Saskatchewan. Um, we were active with a CAP, which was the Coalition of Aboriginal People in Saskatchewan. And at our, annual, our AGA in August of this year, we decided to revive the CAP uh, name. And the reason revive the CAP name from, am, from CAP to Amnesis, and the reason we decided to do that is because Amnesis was a very powerful organization in its day, and it's had some really incredible leaders um, who were really motivated and really fought for the people in Saskatchewan. And a lot of why we're, we moved towards Amnesis and, and what, what we, how we see things is it's all about kinship. It's not about, well, you're, you know, a C31 or an S6 or, you know, it's, it's we're all kin yes. and that's across the board like you know somewhere along the line i had a first nations great grandmother and and all those kind of wonderful things and um i've got some relatives on the reserve and some not on the reserve i've got status grandchildren i've got metis grandchildren and i've got non-status grandchildren so all the divisions that are created are government introduced and they're colonial systems. And that's why we're moving away from that because we don't, we've never been consulted. We've never agreed to it. And we are looking at a more family kinship oriented uh, indigenized organization that is established by the indigenous people and and um that's who we work for can you um can you give us a little, um, a little bit about myself okay. sorry dan a little bit about myself i'm um i live at batosh saskatchewan um my grandmother was raised here and uh both my parents are Métis and from, from Saskatchewan, and we can trace our ancestry back to the 1600s in Quebec on both sides of the family. So I, I support the, the, the Métis in Quebec and uh, in, in Eastern Canada. And, um, and I guess that's part of the reason why, you know, why, why I'm here. So it's great. A bit of your uh, background or bio uh, as far as application. Yeah, okay. Uh, I want to say that uh, I agree with uh, Charlene and Rock for the world. Uh, and first of all, I would like to, I said, as I said last week, you know, uh, I hope you will pardon me for my bad in English. And uh, <clears throat> you'll Maybe forget me if something, sometimes I consult some notes to get not lost, okay? Thank you. My name is Richard Harvey and uh, <clears throat> I'm president of the board of the Saint-Nazaire Chitogama community of Miti and offers a status and non-status of virgin people uh, from Lac Saint-Jean we are located about uh, 300 miles north of Quebec City, okay? I've been a militant for Aboriginal cause for more than 30 years. 
and a member of uh, Alliance Autochtone du Québec since uh, about uh, 20 years, okay? And uh, <clears throat> I've been a member of the national board of l'Alliance Autochtone du Québec uh, <clears throat> since uh, January to September 2020. But I resigned. I resigned in September because the because of the dispute uh, within the executive board concerning the fate of the Beatles of Quebec and particularly uh, of the Métis members of l'Alliance Autochtone du Québec. Uh, I am here with everyone to signify my support for this mutual recognition between between us, between Quebec Métis and Saskatchewan Métis. And uh, yes, I support this uh, mutual recognition of all meters uh, of the country without distinction, without exception, I think. Okay, thanks a lot, Richard. Uh, Charlene, uh, can you explain that the newly elected uh, president of the Saskatchewan, I think you touched a bit on it before, the Congress, and why the name change? Uh, why did not it stay the same and why the name change? What, how, how did it happen and why? Um, there's been uh, a majority, I would say a majority of our, our board of directors on Amnesis are um, Métis <coughs> um, members and both of them are off reserve. And there's been talk for quite a while about reviving Amnesis, um, lots from the Métis community, from people who have been disgruntled with the Métis nation of Saskatchewan. So there's been that discussion for a while. And, and like I said earlier, there's, um, there's lots that have, you know, family members and they can't be part of the same organizations. So, um, so that, and, and just because Amnesis was always so well recognized and um, worked so hard for the people. And we, we wanted to really bring that back because it just seems like we don't even really see that much anymore. It just everybody, all our um, indigenous leadership is, seems very complacent and very eager to make deals and deals that we know nothing about, we aren't informed about them um, well enough anyways, and that, that the, the duty to consult, all this stuff is going on and we're, that the grassroots people don't know anything. And our organizations are starting to look exactly like colonial government organizations. And, you know, it's just, um, it's time for some change. It's time for some, some good grassroots movements and okay well just stir things up a bit that's right uh the other way the other thing is this is a follow-up question with the, what we're just talking about you know in the last little while you had an agreement with uh and you touched on it a little bit you have informing the green vision behind it and the understanding of this pact and can you explain a little bit about that Well, I was I was trying to to find it and and just refresh my memory on it a bit, but for me personally, to this more is is just that we support the Métis in Quebec and that that they are there and that we recognize them and that they are not race shifters as the new coin phrase that's out there and. Um, the whole, there's a whole movement right now stating that there's no Métis in the East, which is, you know, it's, as far as I'm concerned, that's a whole government bought and paid for um, agenda, because if they can discount every Métis person in Eastern, in Eastern Canada, then that's a, loss, a lot less people that the government are going to 
be responsible for. Because with the Daniels case, it recognizes Métis in the Constitution. And uh, so that would include Métis. And, and in, the, in the case, it says that it's all across Canada. So, and now the government, of course, is trying to, to pull the wool and say, well, nope, there's no Métis in Eastern Canada. Mm. This one was then. Hold on. Well, go ahead. Yes, go ahead. I would like just to say, just, uh, just to say that not only democracy, but tradition. Tradition, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, and, and, and uh, I don't know, I, I cannot imagine that somebody oppose it. Like uh, we heard about it, you know, uh, about uh, some PTOs uh, in, in Eastern, uh, didn't approve uh, the pact. So I approved that and the majority of the meeting of Quebec approved that. Mm -hmm. it, uh, it's, a, it, it's a reality, you know. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, that's why I uh, attend the pact with Miss uh, with uh, AMSIS. Yes, is this that AMSIS? Yeah. Yes, uh, in Saskatchewan, and uh, I'm proud of it. Yeah, uh, we talked about uh, uh, racism and talked about uh, uh, some bashing that was going on. Uh, in your opinion, can that be addressed, and how can that be changed, uh, Charlene? Well, a, a lot of the um, the um, stuff that's going on on social media, it 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 uh, the main uh, person that's putting a lot of that, and he's written a book called Race Shifting, and and um, you know, albeit there there are some people who have made false claims, it doesn't make everybody's claim false. Um, but I have seen his, him and his group, once, when you're on social media a bit, you get to know who his followers are and what their, their mandate and agenda is. And um, the, I've seen them go after people on social media who, you know, some of them are, are 60 scoop survivors. Um, and they'll come on to, there's one of the Facebook pages, it's called Métis Family Research. And it's for people basically doing genealogy searches and stuff. And they will come and post things and, and you know, information about their ancestors or they want, you know, looking for information. And there's many genealogists on that site. So they will help people um, find their, their ancestry. And, but what's ten, what has happened more often than I care to, to think about is that somebody will come on and they're not familiar with the terms. It's like going, you know, walking into a hospital and, and going into a nursing station. You're not gonna understand all their terminologies and what they're speaking of by their acronyms or, or how they label things. So we've had people come on that page and they've you know, said, I wanna find out about getting Métis status. And there's many from this this jump all over a person and well you're not even metis if you're calling it status you don't know that metis don't have status and and it's it's relentless and it's inappropriate and it's also it's harassment and it's almost against human rights like it's it's um it's just mean I've never seen people be so mean. And I find that um, as a person who was raised um, with, you know, Métis ancestry all the way around is I, I've never, I never ever heard my grandparents or my great grandma ever talk that way that there were no Métis in the East. We had family everywhere and we acknowledged our families everywhere. And some of the generations from Quebec weren't that far back. So I just, I just find it all very um, appalling and I find it really harsh. Um, so we, 
it and that stuff needs to be addressed like that's and i've i've always encouraged people to screenshot things like that when it's on on these facebook chats and and to file a human rights complaint against these people and um because it it is it is harassment it's and it's just it's downright unforgivable is what it is so thanks a lot uh, scotia is a is a good example of how, what the government does yeah yes yes yeah yes yeah. well thank you do you have any comments on that yeah okay um <laughs> i would say something yes yeah. um you know I think that uh, British National Council's nationalism is a historical and anthropological misappropriation. You know, <clears throat> how can such ideas can can be shaped, can can take shape? This is a restrictive form of jurisprudence. And uh, it's a legal and institutional and historic and social misappropriation, nothing more. The MNC at the best is nothing more than a community like many other community in the country, which, uh, which, which, which has is uh, is uh, <clears throat> um, uh, uh, I could say that uh, uh, particularities, you know? Okay, nothing more, nothing more than any any community in this country. Uh, <clears throat> I think that uh, it's the historic treason. Uh, from the government, for the federal government, eh? the instance, and the First Nations, I'm sorry. So I think that it's the CAP's role to do his best to defend their common interest without distinction, without discrimination. Okay. Thank you very much. Yes. Yeah, as a as a PTO of the Congress of Aboriginal People, do you uh, do you think that CAP should recognize the the Nation Métis au Québec as a partner, and should they have a voice at the table? Charlene, what do you think of that? Well, it's it's ironic. We actually had this discussion um, with our board of directors, and one of the things that was and and was brought up was our mou with in reality in any of the discussion that has never been brought up that they should have their own organization at the cap table what was the big issue was when richard was not um when there was issues with him not being able to attend the aga and that there was um the feelings that the Métis question and this whole Métis identity thing wasn't being addressed. I, I know that um, CAP will only allow one PTO per region. And we and that was clearly outlined in our discussion at the board meeting. Um, and and what, there's, what they had said was um, that internal provincial um, problems are within the province. And I said, I agree. So, but why is, is the MOU that we have with an issue? And so that was, I don't think that they understood a lot of the intent um, on the national level. And um, I do support that the, the Quebec organization and all the organizations, every PTO, were here to support all of the un unrepresented. So there's no, there is no organization like, so that you've got one or 
organization saying there's no Métis in the East, which is the MNC, and, and how does the MNC get that authority to say that there's no Métis in the East? Because it's going to, it's, what's going to happen, and what I've said to people is be careful because you might be next. You, they might say, because there's, there's always different groups. I never grew up with the word Métis. We were Machif because we were French speaking. We came from um, Quebec. We went through Saint, Sault Ste. Marie into the southern part of Manitoba. Uh, great, Cuthbert Grant is like my fifth great grandfather. And that's a whole other side, like that's the Scotch side. And my one grandma was shocked to hear that we had Scotch in our family because she thought we were only French. So, but there's always been those divisions between Scotch Métis, French Métis, Anglican Métis, Roman Catholic Métis, and the government has played on those. And I, and I don't accept that and I don't encourage it. I encourage unification and unity in that we're all together. So you're, you're, you're uh, encouraging in inclusion at the table. And I guess right. in your words, Cap, yes. so in your words, Cap should it be, uh, should address uh, the Nation Métis of Quebec as a partner or give them a, a place at the table. Well, I can't, you know, because a lot of this um, and what I said at the CAP board meeting was this was something I inherited. Um, we've discussed, you know, that there is Métis across Canada from coast to coast to coast. Um, and I support that 100%. In my new role as the elected leader for Amnesis, what the cap bylaws, I have to go with what the cap bylaws say. Yes, yes. But I, I, do in, I do believe that the organization in Quebec should definitely be representative of the Métis in Quebec. Yes, yes. And I may get my knuckles wrapped for that because they're saying, <laughs> they're saying that it's none of the other provincial organizations business what's going on in another province. But if we've got a group of Métis who are feeling that they're not being represented, then I think it should, it should like, and I said that at the board meeting, I said, maybe this is something that needs to be mediated, right. you know, between the groups. Very good. Thank you very much for that. That's right. Good. Because, you know, if you've, if you've got people, yeah, if you've got people that are not happy, then there's something wrong. Right. Very good. So Michelle, any comments on that? Yes, okay. Um, I think, uh, you know, Alliance Autochtone du Québec, AAQ, okay, uh, is the PTU of the province of Quebec. The officer says that only members of this organization are entitled to representation. Um, but my thinking is, different. Uh, I think that all organization in each of the territories have the legitimate right to be represented on CAP. Uh, you know, the letters patent, I don't know if the term is correct, but, and the mission of the CAP itself is very clear in the documents. It is written, you know, um, and in my mind, by the way, it says PTO affiliates also may act as umbrella organization for multiple regional and local groups of Aboriginal people. So I think that every community has a right to represent the right to act and the right to sue. Finally, at the end of the day, nothing is more important that uh, nothing equals the strength of numbers. That's it. 
Okay. That's okay. what I have to say. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Charlene, uh, my next question is, there's been a lot of turmoil in CAP because of, you know, the approach of Mr. Law and that, and the new elected um, uh, president uh, at CAP. So do you think things will change with the new elected uh, president at CAP? And uh, is, is the movement going to change direction, in your opinion? I, I have a feeling it may. I have a really good feeling it may. Um, as far as that human rights uh, meeting that you were talking, there was a lot of very angry people involved with CAP. And we are actually doing a lot of um, fighting right now with the government at a bunch of different tables. Um, and I think that they're actually quite surprised. I think that they're kind of taken aback because I think Mr. Bertrand was very complacent and very much a deal maker. And I don't think Mr. St. Pierre is on that same, same level that they're on. Um, I've, we've, we've, we've got a bunch of different committees and the one I sit on the languages committee and um, Mr. St. Pierre was actually on that same committee as well and um, really took the, the federal government to task because they've only, in, and UNDRIP, they've only engaged us since October and they've been engaging all of the distinctions based for the last six months. And in like distinction, I, I told them I had a real problem with distinctions based, number one. And, and Richard, this kind of leads into what you're talking about, about representation. I did not believe in the Métis Nation of Saskatchewan anymore. I had lost total faith with the organization. And on our new board, our vice president used to be the vice president of the Métis Nation of Saskatchewan, as well as the, the treasurer of the Métis Nation of Saskatchewan, one of our board, and Mr. Alan Morin, and one of our board members used to be the president, and he was a secretary and a regional representative, Mr. Robert Doucette, because it is just it's gotten so, um, it's not good. Anyways, so we, we, that's why when we moved over. So I understand what you're saying, Richard, is that, you know, the representation, it's frustrating when you only have one organization to go to. But I understand what you're saying also on, about under the umbrella. But I, I, I really get the feeling that, uh, Chief St. Pierre is going to really take them to task because that was brought up several times at the PT at the meetings tables that I sat on with him was that he really took them to task on the um, that they hadn't negotiated with us and uh, that it had they had been negotiating with the distinctions based organizations for for six months already so. Yeah, I, I, I think there might be a little bit of spit there more than what we've seen out of Mr. Bertrand. Michelle, do you see uh, the change of <laughs> leadership to uh, Mr. St. Pierre and uh, you see that there is a positive? Oh, yes. <laughs> uh, I think, uh, I think uh, it's very different here. Yeah. It's, it's very possible that things will change because Mr. St. Pierre is not like, uh, I think Charlene, uh, 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 I agreed with Charlene like that, with that. But um, they will only change, the ch things will only change if we take the time to address the issue of dis discrimination against Aboriginal people in general and meaty people in particular are kept and do so very quickly. And I think that uh, the recent move of uh, Mr. St. Pierre are, are a, good, a good thing for us, you know. Uh, concrete actions will have to be initiated. This would reiterate his request of June 
20 June, last June, okay, of this year for a friendly consensual meeting on this issue with the president of CAP, Mr. St. Pierre, and his board. This request should be approved and supported by all of us. And uh, I, I hope all the organization of the country that uh, was concerned. Okay, well, thank you very much, uh, Sean. Uh, my last question for all of you, and uh, we're getting to the end of the, our, our thing, our interview. It seems like the, the Métis of Quebec are looking for stability and uh, uh, leadership and stability. Uh, what must happen right now between uh, all the Métis and Quebec? And that, you know, your opinion, Charlene, with that, if, to bring this polariz polarization of the Métis in Quebec and the, the <clears throat> cultural recognition and the kingship that they have. What must happen there, in your opinion? Uh. Well, I, I kind of feel like it's the one kid on the school ground getting picked on all the time. That's, that's kind of how I'm looking at the Métis in the East thing. And, and like I said, we did, we did have a discussion about this at our, our board meeting. And one of the things I suggested is that, that um, you know, CAP make a public statement about that. I, I know myself and my whole board supports that there's Métis across Canada. And, and that's something that we as a board believe in. And I think that, um, that the other you know, PTOs, I, I hope that this is something that they'll look forward to. And like I said, it was brought up at the, at the uh, board meeting that, uh, you know, that we should probably do this. I know we're really, really busy right now. The, the, um, the, we've got all these tables trying to close up for this fiscal year. So we've been, I think I've never been on so many Zoom and WebEx meetings in my life is in the last month. That's, you know, we've been doing that like crazy. So, um, you know, once things slow down, that may be what they'll be looking at. But I know, like, we have got people out there that are working really hard on things like Seb Millet and, and Professor Bouchard, and you know, with their books and, and all their other wonderful things that they're finding. Joanne Brissette, there's lots of really, really good grassroots people that are working very hard to say, hey, you know, like what what these guys are saying is not true, and I think that um, I I I kind of wonder sometimes if there was some deal made somewhere. Like it's just I I don't know why it's just I can't believe that there isn't um, more people standing up against this. But it's like I said, it's complacency has gotten to be quite the norm. So yeah, I think that. Um, the noise is going to be coming. I think the noise is going to be coming. Well, thank you very much. I know we've been, I've personally been making lots of noise. <laughs> yes, we've seen that. <laughs> we've seen that. We, we, we see your postings all the time. Uh, Nishal, as far as uh, your yes. on the polarization of what needs to happen in Quebec. Yes. Uh, 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 I would say that I believe that leadership, you know, must arise from the awakening of people. So, for example, this meeting that we have now and uh, the pact between your organization, Saskatchewan, AMSIS, and uh, Nation, Nation Métis of La Nation Métis du Québec, uh, is a, it's, a, it's a step forward, you know? A lot of things will have to, to be done but first and foremost, uh, the dialogue between us and the affirmation of we are, of who we are. Uh, I think that mm -hmm. it's time to speak out, speak up, speak loud. Anyway, but time has come. Yep, yep. Well, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. we're, at the end, we're at the end of our, uh, yeah. our, our interview process. Uh, any last comments, Charlene? Very short. Um, this is this is a government initiative, the no east, no Métis in the east, 
and it's more of the divide and conquer mentality and uh i'm not going to sit back and and take it and i i what i see out there there's a lot of people that aren't going to so it's going to be a challenge but um it's that they're they're onto this new distinctions based kick which is uh they're trying to alienate people from and i said I, you know if i just had lots of money just to take them to court for everything that they do it would all stop <laughs> you know but yeah. well, thank you very much. so that's it if i win a million dollars you know where i'll be spending it <laughs> <laughs> okay the show any last words okay uh, last word i would say uh, i would say um it's time that uh, the METI, METI agenda rise, you know? The, not only in, in Quebec and in Eastern, and on the Eastern of the country, but everywhere in the West together. Right. I hope so. Well, thank you very much. Thank you all for participating and uh, we'll see you at the next uh, interview. Thank you very much. <laughs>